ego death in Christ. If you search online for this thing, it's called ego death. There's all these different um, ideas about, about what you get in ego death. And ego, you know, the, the kind of the self, if you will. A lot of people talk about having this experience of ego death when they take LSD. It's like supposedly the first stage of ego death. And they, they talk about it as this kind of feeling of, of not seeing yourself, but seeing everything else around you. You kind of, if you will, evaporate into the, to the world around you. This isn't the kind of ego death that Scripture talks about. It's quite different. St. Paul says these words. He says, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. Now, when he says, it's no longer I who live, he's saying, literally in the Greek, he says, it is no longer ego that lives. The words ego in Greek. And I realize that St. Paul not, might not have had the same kind of understanding of ego as Sigmund Freud, but not too far off. I was looking at an article from um, Psychology Today, and they said the ego is that part of us which seeks to justify us. You know that part of yourself that seeks to justify yourself? It's given to judgment, right? So it's a, the thing that makes us not think that we're bad, right? Because, because we want to all feel like we're good little boys and girls. And so when someone offends us or says something negative about us, our ego jumps in and says, hey, leave him alone. He's great. Here's why. She's great. Leave him alone. Here's why. And so our ego is this thing that we begin to build. We build it throughout our lives. And something that St. Paul says that he lost. That's incredible. I hope one day I can say, I lost my ego. That'd be incredible. But an ego is something that's very difficult to get rid of. Because we've been developing our ego and others have been developing it for us since we were born. Okay? Mom and dad give us a particular ego. Our, our cousins, our family, our friends, people around us, our enemies, they give us an ego that we begin to build and bolster. And we start doing this thing in life where we create what are called defensive mechanisms. Right? You've met people with defense mechanisms that you don't enjoy. Their defense mechanism might be to punch you in the nose if you offend their ego. That's maybe the least enjoyable form of a defense mechanism. It works though, right? Mike Tyson said everyone, everyone thinks they, they know something until you punch them in the face. <laughs> or everyone has a plan. Sorry, sorry Mike Tyson. Everyone has a plan <laughs> until you punch them in the face. Well, Okay, that's a form of self-defense that's built up for the ego so as to keep the ego intact. People say something against us and we have a hard time forgetting because why? Well, they damaged our ego. Inside of us was this, like, no, that's not who I am. They said it's who I am and that's not who I am. And so we fight and fight and fight because our ego is very alive. No one wants to be told you have a, a big ego. Why? Well, it means something in the world. It means you're annoying. But it means something more in Scripture. It means that Christ is not the one who's alive in you. St. Paul said, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. So having a big ego as a Christian means that we have a little Jesus. It means we have a little Jesus. St. Paul says some incredible words. He says, I died to the law. What does St. Paul say, mean when he says, I died to the law? Well, Paul had, had built his ego on something quite holy, quite sacred, the law. Paul had, prior to Christ, truly identified himself with the Jewish law. Right? He tells us this. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees of the tribe of Benjamin. Among his brethren, he, there, was, there was no one who equaled his zeal. He was trained under the greatest rabbi, Gamaliel. St. Paul had perfectly identified himself with the law of Moses, that most perfect and holy law. Paul says, when Christ came, I died to the law. I died to the law. Why? 
The law is good, yes. The law is just, yes. The law is holy, yes. But someone is greater than the law has come. He who gave the law. And so he gave up on himself as Saul and became Paul. He became a new man whose identity was in Christ. Identify himself as one who Christ fully dwells. He doesn't just say that, you know, he now follows Christ like following a law or following what mommy and daddy told me was good and bad. He says, now I follow Christ. And Christ is not just someone I follow. Christ is someone who dwells within me. Christ dwelt within Paul. He replaced his ego. He replaced his sense of who he was completely when Christ came in. So this is the aim of the Christian life, that Christ might truly live within us and that all other things will be counted as rubbish in comparison to Christ. Consider the rich man, what ego he had. The rich man who mistreated Lazarus all of his life. He's burning in hell. Consider the size of his ego. He says, can you send that, that dog Lazarus who I abused all of his life here to help me, to get me some water. Tell the slave, fetch me some water. Even in hell, Lazarus was still a slave to him. Abraham says, no, I can't do that. Well, then can you tell that slave, Lazarus, to go serve my family, that slave Lazarus, by warning them about the impending judgment? Abraham says, no, no, you can't have that happen for you. Lazarus is not a slave. Lazarus lives with me. His ego persisted. What an ego, it persisted even in hell. The death of the ego was necessary in order for Christ to be enthroned. Anybody have that friend? who will tell them when they have something hanging out of their nose. You appreciate that friend, right? You appreciate that friend even more if that friend tells you that in private or pulls you aside, right? It's like, all right, that's a really good friend. He's not only looking out for me, but he's also kind to me, right? I mean, so we appreciate that because it, because it helps us save face, literally. The same goes with the spiritual life. We should appreciate the friends around us who tell us when our ego is getting big. Those friends are trying to save our lives. Those are the friends that you want to keep by your side. You want to surround yourself with people who will be there for you, not bolstering your ego. Not bolstering your ego but instead helping you grow in Christ. The Holy Fathers say that if someone pays you a compliment about the spiritual life, don't say anything or say glory to God. Don't take credit. You don't want your ego bolstered in the spiritual life. In the same way, if someone comes to you and says something negative, let it go. Otherwise, you're just bolstering your ego. St. Paul arrived at a perfect understanding of ego death. Remember that I told you that in modern psychology, ego is that part of us that directly tries to justify us. St. Paul says this, he says, I do not even judge myself. I don't even judge myself. It's incredible. His ego was so dissipated that he wouldn't even judge himself. What Christological vision he had. What a man who took seriously the promises that God made over his life. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. You're my child. I chose you before the foundations of the world to be holy and blameless. 
He took those words seriously, and he refused to judge himself. Refused to judge himself. I once knew a person who said that they had an experience with God where they were suddenly something different. They could see themselves for the first time. And it wasn't just that they were seeing themselves, they saw God in them. And they noticed that nothing mattered at that moment. And all of the thoughts that they had about themselves, all the negative ideas that they conceived of themselves were suddenly gone because they saw themselves for the first time with purity. May we have that experience with God to see who we truly are with purity. We have many ideas of who we are. It's true that we should come before God and always say, I'm a sinner. But if we get too stuck on looking at our own sins and looking at ourselves all the time, we will only bolster that ego. It's not just avoiding always thinking great things about ourselves. It's also avoiding always thinking negative things about ourselves. If we are simply thinking about negative things about ourselves, that is because it is not Christ who lives within us, but our disgusting ego. That's not eyes on Christ, that's eyes on self. And eyes on self is going to lead to more ego focus. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. St. Paul says, I forget all things that are past and I press on to the onward call of Christ. Brothers and sisters, forget what is past. Brothers and sisters, do not get hung up on yourself. Do not get hung up on the things that you've done. Instead, focus on the things that Christ is doing. This isn't just permissible. This isn't just soft, nicey language. If you don't do that, then you won't be following Christ. Now let me say that again for you. If you get stuck thinking about your own sin all the time, and you don't press onward to the call of Christ, you will not be serving Christ. You will be serving your ego. So I don't simply say this to be nicey. I say this because if you don't do it, you're going to be stuck in the hell of yourself. Let go of the self. Allow God, allow Christ to be the focus. And then, what will be our focus? Not hell, but heaven himself. Heaven himself. May we all one day say with St. Paul, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me.